Hi guys, in this video I'm heading back to Dalian, a city in China you might not be familiar with. It's been 8 years since I called the city home, and I'm embarking on a sentimental trip back to the city, eager to reconnect with my past and discover how much it's changed. Good morning, I don't know if you can tell that I'm super excited because I'm very tired. Yesterday was one hell of a night in a good way. And I only got a few hours of sleep, but today I'm here by the gate going to Dalian. And Dalian is my Chinese hometown. I lived there for three years and it's my first time I'm going there in about like eight years, I guess, ever since I came to Korea. And Dalian is an important part of my life and I can't wait to tell you more about it. So I didn't know such thing existed. It's the first time I'm seeing this, but it's called Ceremony of the Airport Gatekeepers. And this is what it looks like. to try to wake myself up a little bit by having breakfast and coffee and see you in Dalian. All right, so the flight was just about an hour. I just landed here in Dalian and I'm about to meet one of the coolest people ever, I guess. It's my good friend Igor with whom we studied here for three years. And we haven't seen each other for, I guess, about five years. He came to my graduation in 2017. And now we are about to reunite. All right, so I met Igor. We just arrived to Tini Wachao station. And one of the first things that I noticed is that the subway here in Dalian is a little bit more loud. So people actually can talk because in Korea or in Seoul, uh, you don't really have this type of things happening. So it's so usually foreigners who sometimes don't know and start talking and locals usually keep it very quiet. So here you can actually have proper conversations. It's not too loud, but you can still like talk comfortably with your normal voice. And we are now going to find something to eat and go to the area where I used to study in high school. And on our way to find food, I saw this really cool shop which specializes on DIY fashion and original designs. I had to experience it myself since this was such a cool idea and I've never seen anything like this before. So the brand offers semi-finished clothing and tons of accessories that you can use to design your own t-shirt, hoodie, pants, socks, you name it. I suck at fashion so I went for this simple hoodie and picked up a few stickers, one of which was a black cat which reminded me of my cat Sao. I chose my stickers and where to place them as well as this big brand name on the back because I didn't have any other designs in mind. But if you come prepared, you can properly customize your pieces of clothing. They can print any of the custom images or texts too. And soon after, my hoodie was ready. Alright, so we just came to this restaurant. Uh, it does look like uh, modern Chinese, that there is a lot of options here uh, to choose from. So we went for this Shenzhen Shawan style spicy chicken. So this is basically a big a bowl of chicken and uh, Xinjiang is the province here. So the cool thing here, uh, the way they order is like you make an order, they have a Bluetooth earphone in them. So they press a button, tell what you ordered to, I guess, the kitchen staff and then uh, you get a receipt over here on your table and they basically give 25 minutes and then they have this like send watch, send clock and then it, the food should be ready in 25 minutes and this is the first time when I see that they count actually the time. I've never seen this before but yeah, it's a very cool thing. Okay, so one thing that is different here is that um, let's say when I'm in Korea I usually get cold water with everything. Here it's either hot water or hot tea. So here we have hot tea. The logic behind this is like better digestion, I guess. It helps you digest the food. All right, so this is the first dish for today. This is called Shao Mai, which is basically Inner Mongolian style uh, dumpling with lamb filling. So it's a little bit different because the dough here is very thin and it looks like there is actually some sort of broth inside. 
together with uh, meat, so we are gonna try. There is also an onion inside, and it's uh, filled with flavors, a little bit salty, a little bit sour. And I guess the broth adds to the texture in general, so it becomes very uh, moisture in a good way. So the difference here is that usually when I eat lamb, there is this kind of like specific to lamb kind of taste and smell that you can feel uh, in basically any any of the dishes, be it hot pot, uh, be it skewers, be it just meat like kebab meat with rice. If it's lamb, it's usually a very distinctive uh, smell and taste. But this one, if I didn't know it was lamb, I would probably think it's beef or pork, or a mix of those. It's very, very soft and it doesn't have the lamb specific smell. And I like this a lot, actually. Okay, let's try Dapandi, which is the name of the dish. And I think it translates as um, a big bucket of chicken. Big pan of chicken. Big pan of chicken. It's really, really good. It's a little bit spicy, and to me, I think it's a perfect combination between like meat, carbs, and the broth. And the fact that it's all mixed together, so all the flavors from uh, spices and each ingredient kind of add up to the entire mix of the dish. Uh, we are here now in front of Lycan Coffee, and this is one of the brands that I remember I read about when I was in university, or we probably did some sort of like case study or something like this, because this was on the rise a few years ago. And how I understand this coffee is one of the fastest growing chains here. It's an alternative to like a co big coffee chain like Starbucks and stuff like this. With Chinese specific taste to locals here. I don't really know much about what it tastes like. This is going to be my first time. But uh, I thought this is something that I must try at least while I'm here in Dalian. And so the way you make an order here, you scan a QR code and make an order online. And I think once your coffee is ready, you just pick it up from there. We just made an order and it's going to be ready after half an hour. 15 on 9, now it's 2.25. So the waiting time is pretty long. Alright, so we are going to try this magical drink, I guess. Coffee with alcohol, coffee with vodka. This is some sort of a latte, so it's not very strong. Um, I don't really feel coffee that much. Uh, but I do feel the, the smell and a little bit of a taste of some alcohol. So it's like very weak coffee drink kind of thing, a little bit sweet with milk and just a tiny bit of like Chinese vodka uh, taste inside. So this is basically what it is, I guess. The only thing is that it's not a very strong coffee. Other than that, I, I like it. it uh, it's not too sweet and there is milk and it's hot and there is alcohol too. And it's also creamy as well. All right, so we came from here, where we were in Dalian, to this area in Jinchetain, and this is where I used to study in high school. Almost feels like home. I remember that KFC over there, and there used to be Pizza Hut, and then right behind you see there is an adventure park. Yeah, there is a Pizza Hut over there, I remember this place. And Pizza Hut in China, or at least here, is like a restaurant where you get to sit and order more than a pizza. I think, right? That it yeah. was before, like lasagna, salads, spaghetti, something like this. But before, uh, like for example, in Korea, you can't even sit in Pizza Hut. You just, it's only takeout. And it's only pizza. Only delivery. Yeah. <laughs> so here I remember it was a different experience. We took a train here. It takes about an hour to arrive. And we are gonna go take the walk that we always used to take to the school. All right. This is the most uh, sentimental prior part, probably, of the entire trip. This is where a lot of memories are made. Like over here, we used to play, what do you call it? I don't know, like a ground hockey surface? I don't know, like we play hockey with the ball and, and also a lot of memories here with like playing football. Yeah, this is the dormitory where we used to live in. I remember in the very end of our stay in China, we rented one of those uh, I think buildings and we had um, a kind of like party, like the graduation party, our own graduation party over there. Great memories. And now this is very familiar. Like this used to be the gym. I think it is still the gym. And then the entrance to the campus was here. 
and then since it's a uh, gender segregated school, so the boys and girls uh, used to study and live separately. That probably explains why I'm so bad at like talking to girls. <laughs> the entrance was here, and we'd walk in here. This is Maple Leaf International School, Dalian, China. Before on the left there used to be like dormitory, and this is the buildings where we used to study. And then right there is a library. But here it says now it's like middle and elementary campus admissions office. I don't really know what that means. It may not be the, uh, the campus where I used to study for, but we'll see. All right, so eager to talk to a few people here. And then apparently this is the elementary school right now. When we used to be here, this was a high school only for boys. Apparently high school uh, is now on the opposite side and this is just elementary and uh, middle school like the uh, sign says over there. So things are different and that means it's very difficult to get in there, but yeah. And right behind me is the main campus. Uh, over here before it used to be only uh, the campus for girls, but I used to have a couple of classes there and meeting and extracurricular activities. This is the main thing, Maple Leaf International School. Three years of my life and education before Korea was here. Игорь, у тебя есть этот? Форбен? Как он называется? ID. All right, so now that we understood that this is not really the same place because the campus we used to study at is not even high school anymore. Things are obviously different. So I don't think there is anybody that we used to know still works here when it comes to teachers. I've got no connections here whatsoever. So there is, I think, no point to even try and to get inside. We're gonna go to the beach area. And then one of the cool like memories I think we had is something called beach run, when we used to run I think like 2.5 kilometers around the campus and along the along the beach, 2.7 yeah, and it used to be like a pretty cool memory and we are gonna go to that uh, exact beach. We're gonna witness some beautiful sunset here. Igor has planned it really well, so... Oh, I remember that bridge. I used to like stand on a skateboard, I would outfall. I would hurt myself and I would like be scared of skateboard for, for a very good amount of year, number of years. <laughs> this. So beautiful. All right, so now for dinner we are here at Chao Kao, which is basically a restaurant um, here in Dalian. And this is a food that we have. I'll quickly introduce you what it is. Uh, it's too delicious, so I don't want it to get cold. Here, this is a fish cake, fried fish cake. And here we have fried noodles. And inside you have uh, some omelet, you have onion, sausage. And this is a smashed cucumber salad. Uh, with a little bit of pepper on top. And then here, one of the most exciting things, this is skewers, Chinese skewers. And then here we have beef skewers, we have tofu skewers, we have a little bit of chicken and also lamb skewers. Next we have takpai. This is chicken feet, fried chicken feet. And then we have eggplant with some green and a little bit of pepper. I think it's oven baked eggplant. And the unique thing about this is that it's uh, covered in garlic and then a little bit of pepper on top. And then the last thing, very simple, this is the bread. So this is going to be the feast for today. Все вот эти посиделки, это означает только одно, что люди просто хотят объединиться, стать коллективом ближе между друзьями или просто если на работе имеются коллеги, люди просто приходят в это место, вместе кушают, пьют, и это может длиться 4 часа, а может вообще и всю ночь. Поэтому Почти каждый выходные все сюда приходят, это прям классика. Но по поводу ножек куриных, лапки точнее вот эти, китаянки обычно их любят кушать, потому что там содержится коллаген, это для кожи очень полезно, вообще в принципе для всего организма, поэтому неважно это вот лапки или какие-то другие вообще штуки, всякие жирочки, не знаю, вот эти вот все, все, что связано с мясом, они это все кушают именно с жирком, чтобы было. Вот, ну и обычно покупают какие-то при... дополнительные витамины, связано все, что с коллагеном, но это просто именно природный вот этот коллаген, так скажем. Вот. По поводу шашлычков, это получается яру чвара, это просто баранина, маленькие шашлычки и баранины, и большие, нюру чвара, это говядина, тофу и тофу тоже любят кушать. А, потом, ну, например, если это на диете, обычно кушают и тофу, на самом деле по калориям оно то же самое mm -hmm. все выходит. Вот. 
Но остальное, на самом деле, не имеет никакого прям большого смысла. Просто кушать то, что любят. Good morning, guys. This is the hoodie I got yesterday. And this is a little bit for show, I guess. And this is how it looks from the back. It's going to be like a great memory to bring with me everywhere, I guess. I just want to get something from there and, and yeah, I like this one. But this is what the view is like for Cafe Chu. We're now walking to Akarin Street, a place where we used to go a lot and eat, I guess. And then we had a lot of like performances there because of Korean friends. So a little Korea here in Dali and we're gonna check it out after so many years again. And a lot of Chinese cities have Korea towns with a big population of Koreans who work and live and study here. And this was one of them. Uh, and I remember a lot of uh, our Korean friends from high school used to live in this area. And what makes this special, at least for me, is that first of all, there are like a, quite a few stores with Korean signs on them. There is also Paris Baguette. There are also some stores that sell Korean products. Like I remember I used to have ice cream here a lot. And yeah, I think you can still get a lot of them here. So uh, it's really nice to revisit this place as well. This is a breakfast today here in Dalian and this is pork noodles and it's called Tesseluro Ta Xiamian and uh, basically it's like stewed, stewed pork with noodles and in the soup is um, vegetables. We're gonna try a little bit with uh, the broth first. It's very rich in taste, salty, a little bit sour. Uh, but at the same time very simple and I don't know a lot of the food that I've tried here so far uh, is not spicy but at the same time it's delicious because in Korea a lot of the things that are not spicy may be sometimes a little bit bland to me so here I don't really feel that. Uh, I don't think I've tried this before and this is going to be the first meal of the day. passing by one of the parks that I used to be at before and then uh, found a really small, uh, I don't know, like open space and then there are a lot of older people, I think they're dancing. And then there's like music playing and it's so peaceful and the weather is nice and yeah, it's like a very interesting environment that I thought I wanted to capture and share with you. So now we are by these very high residential buildings and this is where me and Igor used to live uh, one week on holidays before and we are walking in to replicate a photo that we made I think maybe like eight or nine years ago and if we are successful I'll show you what it is uh, like before and after the photo was done. We're gonna walk all the way up and it's 30 floors. Let's go! First floor, a little more up. <laughs> so the rooftop tower is lost, unfortunately. So. <laughs> we made it to the freaking rooftop here. 31st floor, and I see some cool views now. Like going to a new place and discover it by yourself is always good, you know, but I kind of figured out that if I have somebody to visit, it's uh, not just I get to visit the city and, you know, maybe make new memories or revisit old ones. It's also, of course, hanging out with somebody I know, and it's kind of like 
a much better experience, I guess, for me, or maybe it's because I usually travel by myself and can go out by myself in, in other countries. So it's like, I think the first time when I actually go somewhere to visit my friend and it's a very different experience. I'm happy to be here and discovering again some of the new places and we revisiting the old places here in Dali and China. And I love this place. If I can make it an escape and come here for the weekend a little bit more often, it would be really good. But more than anything, I'm happy to show a little bit uh, of what my childhood was here because if anything I'm a confused child. I spent the first 15 years in different cities in Russia and I spent three years here in China and now it's been I think around eight years in South Korea so I'm a hot pot of things I guess without a really clear identity but if anything I'm really grateful for the chances I have to be visiting the world and living it in different places and hopefully taking the best out of every place and culture I visit. We came here to see the sea in Cafe Chu and uh, got some good views, maybe some pictures and stuff like this. I only have about two hours left and I think it's a great way to wrap up the adventure. I'm already thinking about how I'm gonna miss this place even though I only am here for a little more than 24 hours but I think I've done so much and it's really, really cool. My friends and I had one last meal and it was time to go back to South Korea. Living Dalian was bittersweet. Every moment was special, making it hard to say goodbye. Living felt strange, but Dalian is close by and I can return. Yet it took 8 years after my last goodbye. So with gratitude and uncertainty, I say farewell. <laughs>